Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the webinar of the 10th Medical School in South Africa at the Nelson Mandela University. I am Dr. Zitulele Chabalala, and I will be taking you through the events of the evening. Now, before we then begin, um, we will have a few presentations that we'll be going through today. We will hear from our director of the medical school, Professor Nomvete, and from there we will then also be seeing or hearing presentations from colleagues on what the medical school has to then offer. Now, what we will then start with is what the program is about. So we will then see presentations on the admission requirements uh, to get into the program, what the, how the curriculum is set up, who is who in the entire zoo. So without wasting any further time, our first presenter will be Mrs. Laika Connolly, who will be, then be telling us about the admission requirements to get into the program. Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Laika Connolly, the Senior Academic Administrator for the Medical Program. I deal with all applications and we will be going through the admission criteria for both school leavers and university students. Thank you very much. For admission into the MPSHP program, the following criteria must be met. Applicants who are school leavers must meet the minimum national senior certificate requirements for entry into a degree. These applicants are expected to achieve a minimum applicant score of 430 in order to be considered. In addition, applicants must achieve a minimum rating of 60% in each of the following subjects. English as a home or additional language, mathematics, physical sciences, and life sciences. Each applicant is required to write the national benchmark test also known as the NBT. This test must be written no later than the 31st of July 2021. The following criteria are applicable to applicants with previous studies. Applicants who are currently in their first year of study of the first degree will initially be evaluated with the same criteria as school leavers, where their NSC and NBT scores will be taken into consideration. The NBT must be written no later than the 31st of July 2021. Applicants who are in their second or later years of study, including those who have completed their degrees, will be evaluated according to their official academic records, as well as their final NSC results. Please note that only official academic records will be accepted and considered. A minimum achievement of 65% must be achieved for consideration into the program, solely based on an applicant undertaking the full course load of the degree. Applicants who are registered for extended programs will only be considered after the completion of their second academic year, given that they have undertaken the full course load for their degree. For further information on the program, please visit our website at medicalschool.mandela.ac.za. Should you have further queries, you may email us at medicalschool.mandela.ac.za. Applications are only online and opened on the 3rd of May 2021 and will close on the 30th of June 2021. Please note that no late applications will be accepted. Good day, my name is Dr. Elizabeth Dutoy and I'm the curriculum coordinator for the MBCHB program. I'm going to give you an overview of the curriculum. 2021 has been a very, very exciting year. Our first 50 students started and we are well underway. Now, next year, we look forward to growing even bigger and hope to welcome 80 students. 
What is our overall philosophy? Well, our aim at the end of six years is that the medical students will graduate to become comprehensive, primary healthcare oriented, socially accountable and fit for purpose graduates. And um, we mean by, by speaking about comprehensive primary health care, we mean a holistic view on health. So not just curative health, but also health promotion, prevention of disease, yes, cure and treatment, as well as re rehabilitation and palliation and relief of suffering and protection from harm. And so our curriculum speaks to all of these dynamics. It's a competency-based curriculum. We actively incorporate what is called the HPCSA core competencies. The HPCSA being the Health Professional Council of South Africa. And I'll speak a little bit more about that in, um, in a module overview a bit later on. Here's an overview of the curriculum. It's six years. The first three years focus on building foundations in both the medical sciences as well as in clinical skills and aspects around theory and practice of medicine, which I'll discuss a little bit later. The last three years are spent more in the hospitals and clinics in the Port Elizabeth complex. The sixth year being your student's internship year and half of that year will be even be spent in a district hospital. Now, coming back to those first three years, we build foundations in the basic medical sciences in the first year, in second year, and the spirals up to anatomy and physiology, and in third year to learn about the abnormalities and in integrated pathology. We also pay attention, though, to supporting you through in a module called academic literacy and reasoning. And then there's a spiral called theory and practice of medicine in the first two years, which spirals into clinical skills and reasoning. This seems this sees you building the context of health and healthcare and how to be a competent doctor. And in that third year, you spend a lot of time in the skills lab, practicing skills that you will start to, um, to do in for real whilst you're on the clinical platform in the last three years of your studies. There's some guiding principles that have informed how we develop our curriculum. It's spiraling in nature. So essentially, we build foundations in the early years, and then each year that follows, we actively build on the content that was covered in the year before. They're large integrated modules, or you might call them courses, within each year, and they link meaningfully with, with, the same, with other modules in that same year and in the year above. We ensure that students apply knowledge that they learn and that the curriculum content is really applicable to primary um, healthcare in the Eastern Cape and in South Africa. I've mentioned that the program is based at the Mission Vale campus. Now, in order to support our teaching and learning, a lot of work over the past two to three years has been done on this campus and facilities have been totally repurposed so that we have state of the art teaching and learning venues. Here you see what some of the buildings look like just a few years ago. And this slide now shows what these newly refurbished buildings look like. We have a state-of-the-art clinical skills laboratory, we have an anatomy museum if, um, and an anatomy laboratory, a physiology laboratory, a wet lab, we have multi-purpose teaching venues. It really is a lovely campus. I'm going to move forward now and talk about one of the modules in the first year called Theory and Practice of Medicine. And it is this exciting module where the HPCSA competencies are focused on. So if you look at this diagram, in the center there is the healthcare practitioner, but you can't be an effective, efficient, primary healthcare oriented, socially accountable doctor, unless you also look to be a communicator, a collaborator, a leader and manager, a health advocate, a scholar, and a professional. And it is these competencies, especially, that we plan to build in this module called Theory and Practice of Medicine. 
There are three streams in this module, Theory and Practice of Medicine. There's the theoretical aspect where the students reflect on what it is to be a doctor. They also look at the patient within the home and how they relate to their community and to the health system at large. They spend more time looking at health systems and community-oriented care, as well as topics such as lifespan development, professionalism, ethics, leadership and advocacy. There's also a clinical communication and skills stream where they learn to truly communicate in a patient-centered way right from the first year of their studies. And there is a community-based stream. And here it sees students visiting both patients in their homes as well as visiting clinics and building the context of community-oriented care. Being able to give you a brief overview on the curriculum and how we are building it and on what it's structured and also an example of one of the modules theory and practice of medicine it's a really exciting program and we certainly look forward to welcoming our next students thank you Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sabanya Nagya and I am the module lead in the first year basic medical science module here in the MBCHP program at Nelson Mandela University. Uh, what makes this module so unique is that instead of taking a modular approach to each discipline, we have integrated these into one module to contextualize the basic sciences in medical science. So you will begin with basic concepts in chemistry and physics in your first eight weeks. And utilizing this knowledge, we then begin biological applications of chemistry in biochemistry. You then build on this foundation to understand cellular as well as molecular biology, and then progress to a more macro understanding of, hu of the human body when you begin anatomy and physiology. We will become familiar with common vocabulary learned by, uh, used by healthcare professionals, as well as the basic understanding of human systems towards the end of the year. Now, while this is a science heavy module, it is always contextualized in medical sciences, therefore making it tailored to healthcare professionals to better your understanding of the human body and medical applications in subsequent years. We adopt a innovative take to learning and teaching by adopting a flipped classroom. This means that students are provided with tailored interactive learning content, and in doing so can practice self-paced and self-directed learning. This also makes your sessions with your academics more interactive and based on student feedback rather than a one-way didactic lecture. We also make use of digital platforms for our learning for our con content delivery, as well as the use of cutting edge technology in virtual reality and augmented reality. Over and above this, we still have our laboratory ba based practicals to keep us grounded. And by the end of this year, you'll have a solid understanding of the basic sciences to progress through the medical sciences in your subsequent years. We truly look forward to hosting our, a, our second cohort of students in 2022, and we hope you'll be joining us soon. Hello, everyone. Please allow me to take you through academic literacy and the reasoning module. But before I do that, let me outline the purpose of this module. The aim of the module is to provide you with academic and digital literacy skills that will support you and enable you to successfully engage with your studies. The module has two components, academic literacy and digital literacy. These two components are taught by two different lecturers, myself and Ms. Sumaya Ali. I'll start with academic literacy. Okay, um, for academic literacy, the focus areas are the study skills, and the strategies to maximize your potential. We also look at academic reading. We do academic writing, as well as oral skills or speaking skills. Now, let me take you to the digital literacy component. The purpose of this module is to empower learners to become digitally literate. It covers the following areas. The fundamentals, 
MS packages, as well as cyber security. I will now take you to the mode of delivery for academic literacy and reasoning. When it comes to the mode of delivery, we are flexible. We follow what we call a blended learning approach. It allows us to conduct face-to-face -face or mask-to-mask -mask lectures when the situation allows us to do so. We also conduct online classes via our learning management system at Microsoft Teams. Now, let me take you through to um, the Met Club. Okay, um, the Met Club, um, this is an academic literacy extended support program that falls under the wing of um, the student success coach. And the Med Club program is an extracurriculum program in a sense that um, it covers all the topics that cannot be accommodated uh, in the formal curriculum. Um, the Med Club um, takes form um, of mask to mask workshops where it is um, possible to do that as well as online workshops. It covers the following areas. Um, the psychosocial health workshops, peer learning support, primary health and wellness workshops, library skills workshops. It also accommodates uh, disciplinary topics such as clinical key, primary pictures, and all other important um, uh, academic related workshops. And um, this brings me to the end of my short presentation. Thank you. I look forward to see you next year. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Zitulele Chabalal, and I will be presenting on the different technology that we have within the medical school at the Nelson Mandela University. Now, I'll be telling you about all the wonderful physical equipment that we have, but also all the online resources that we have available to all our students. So first things first, we're going to look at our anatomage tables. Now, these tables are virtual dissection tables. So what they do is they give you a 3D view of all the anatomical structures that you find inside the human body. Now, the best thing about these tables is that students will be able to have access to them, dissect out the whole body before they go to the human tissue. In that way, when they get to the human tissue, they will be able to view all of these structures a whole lot better and dissect things out with a purpose. Now, what's really great about them as well is that besides the fact that um, you have the, the, the 3D view of the human body, you also have access to imaging modalities like uh, MRI, your CT scans and X-rays as well. And these are already loaded onto the table. Now, what we then have here is the HoloLens. Now, the HoloLens is a holographic um, headset. So it is that item that is on top of my head. Now, what it does is that it projects um, anatomical structures onto these glasses and creates a hologram. The best thing about these, these uh, lenses is that it allows you to view structures, um, all, all your anatomical structures, but also be able to view your surroundings as well. Now, the best part about it as well is the fact that it is very, very flexible in its application because of the fact that you can download apps onto it. So you can have a biochemistry app or a physiology app, and all of us can use these lenses in order to teach students. Now, one of the things that we recently got as well is an ultrasound machines. We have a few of these. Now, the, the purpose of acquiring these is to supplement the teaching of uh, physiology and of anatomy as well. Now, these ultrasound mach machines will be available to students. And the main, main, main purpose is then to bring cl clinical relevance to the labs, to the dissection hall and the physiology labs as well. So what we will be using these for is we will be looking at the muscles of the arm and then scanning the muscles of the arm so that you can actually see when we say that it moves the fingers, you'll be able to see how those muscles move as you then move your fingers. 
Now, one of, of our amazing online resources is then something called Complete Anatomy. Now, this is a, um, an online resource that has apps available on all of your devices. So on your phone, on your tablet, and on your laptop as well. And the best part is on each and every single one of these devices, it is equally as interactive. Right? So you will be able to move around the, 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 the body, remove muscles, add muscles, remove uh, arteries, add veins, that kind of thing. So, so that's the main purpose of Complete Anatomy. It is an absolutely amazing resource and it is available to all of our students. Now the content found in um, Complete Anatomy is then an, uh, anatomy, physiology, cell biology, and it also has a great resource for clinical procedures that the students will then um, use or do in later years. Next up is then our biopack system. Now our biopack system will be used in the physiology lab. Now this is a non-invasive uh, data acquisition um, equipment that allows you to record and analyze uh, changes in, in your body systems and any physio physiological variables that, that you may then find without the need for poking and, and prodding, right? So there are different attachments that you, you attach to the system and then you can measure different things. All of our students will have access to these biopack systems within the physiology lab. Then we come to Clinical Key Student. Now, it's one of our online resources where students will have access to many, many electronic books, your ebooks. And the best part is that these ebooks are free to access for all of our students and all the prescribed textbooks, especially in the basic medical sciences, are available on this resource for free for all of our students. So there will be no need to buy physical books unless you have a preference for physical books, but all of your books will be available on here for you for free. Then we have uh, our very last piece of physical equipment, and that is then the Body Interact. Now the Body Interact is a clinical simulator, which will be used in the later years once the students start to go into the clinical years. Now, what's really great about the, the Body Interact is that it gives you different scenarios on how um, a, a patient is feeling. So you can see the vitals of the patient, you can view x-rays and any other information that you may need to make a, a um, informed decision on how to treat your patient. And the best part about it is that this Body Interact can be supplemented by apps in the HoloLens as well, so that the clinical side will also get a HoloLens. And that is then a short overview of all the different resources that we have within the medical school. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions should you have any, and have a great evening. Education is one of the most important weapons in a country. We want to transform education into an instrument we can use for development. You have a limited time to stay on Earth. You must try and use that period for the purpose of transforming your country into what you desire it to be. Every human being, young or old, is an inspiration to those who want solutions to problems, national and international. As we take stock of our accomplishments and shortcomings, we should not allow the slightest of times lose sight of our wants and wishes to for education, not only economic participation and freedom of all. I thank you.
Wow. Uh, thank you very much, colleagues, for, for those presentations and all the insights into what the medical program has to offer to all of our students. I hope that uh, all of you, after watching these presentations, are just as excited as we are to be a part of this historic moment. We have now started with our very first cohort, uh, having accepted our very first students in the beginning of this year. Now, I believe that you would, you would agree with me that it is very invaluable to hear from somebody that is currently walking the path and somebody that will be walking the path ahead of you. So with this, I would like to introduce you to Mr. Kasim Osman. He is then one of the students that uh, we have accepted in the medical program and holds a very special position within his peers as well, together, well, together with, well, within the group, um, with his peers. So, Mr. Osman, over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, doctor. My name is Kasim Osman, and I'm part of the first cohort of medical students here at Nelson Mandela University. I'm also the first MBCHB class representative. And so the purpose of my speech here today is to give you a little bit insight of what it's like to be a medical student here at Nelson Mandela University. So as you already know, Nelson Mandela University is based in Quebeca here in the Eastern Cape. And let me just tell you, the city is beautiful. So besides and apart from the degree and academics, Nelson Mandela University offers you a unique lifestyle from sunny beaches to breathtaking hiking trails and world-class coffee shops. We truly have it all. And I promise you, I promise you will never run short of things to do in your free time. With regards to facilities, as you've already seen, our medical school is housed at the newly renovated Mission Bell campus, where we have state-of-the-art facilities and equipment in a conducive learning environment. And if you want more information on that, please check out the virtual tour. Being housed at Mission Bell campus gives us two significant advantages. Number one, we, able to, we are able to engage with other members of the healthcare team, such as our nursing students and our paramedic students. This is extremely important for interprofessional collaboration and building the bridges in healthcare. Number, number two, the Mission Vale campus is in close proximity to the Mission Vale and Zwili township areas. And this is important for the university's primary healthcare focus. Nelson Mandela University is truly at the heart of primary healthcare innovation. And I think that makes our program quite unique. As a Mandela medical student, you will be able to go out and engage with the communities and the clinics surrounding our campus from your first year. This is extremely valuable because for me, when I went out, it reminded me that I'm here to become a doctor and I'm not here to just become a scientist. And it's often very easy to get lost in the science in your first three years. So just on the curriculum, as Dr. Nagia pointed out earlier, uh, for basic medical sciences, we take a, a bit of a different approach where we focus on, we don't focus on individual disciplines, but we combine and have a more integrated approach to the sciences. For me, this was a much easier approach to understanding the curriculum as it allowed me to build my foundations and then build on top of that. So it's very systematic and it's a very easy way to grasp the content. So along with that, the medical school has included various support mechanisms into the curriculum, such as programs on stress reduction, nutrition and the academic literacy program. These programs are extremely important because it not, not only helps us develop as doctors, but also as human beings. The support we receive from lecturers at Nelson Mandela University is quite amazing. They always have an open door policy and they're always willing to assist where they can. So in conclusion, why should you come to Nelson Mandela University? Number one, Port Elizabeth is extremely beautiful and it's an amazing city to study. Number two, our MBCHP curriculum is uniquely designed to train fit for purpose medical practitioners. And number three, you now have a friend in the medical program, me. So on behalf of the 2021 MBCHP class here at Nelson Mandela University, we would, we would like to say good luck with the rest of your metric year and we wish you all the best. Just a few months ago, we were in your shoes and we are living proof that getting into medical school is not impossible. You just have to put in the work and you have to put in the hours. If there are any other questions on student life here at Nelson Mandela University, I'd be happy to answer those. Just don't ask me about the clubs 
because I'm Muslim, so I don't do alcohol. Thank you so much, and back to you, Dr. Shaolala. Thank you very much, Kasim. Um, when when you spoke about them having a friend in you, uh, there's a song that came to mind um, in in Toy Story. When you got troubles, I got them too. So yes, it's 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 really it's really uh, enlightening to 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 see that um, all the hard work that that has been put into developing the program from many many years until we actually had. A, a, a staff compliment is is working well and we appreciate the fact that you are you are um, benefiting from from all the hard work that that has gone into it so so thank you very much for for those words um and now we move on to professor Fikile Nomvete. now professor Nomvete is the director of the medical school and he will then be giving us an overview of the the tenth medical school in in the country. Why did it come to to um, to the Nelson Mandela University? You've heard about the curriculum. Now you need to know about the school itself and its history. So, Prof. Nomved, welcome. Hi. Uh, thank you, Zitulele, uh, for the kind words, and uh, and thank you for welcoming me. Um, and a good day to all our our viewers out there and those that have joined to participate in uh, in this webinar and, uh, and and indeed thank you for joining us for this webinar for the nelson mandela university medical school uh, as stated i'm the director of this medical school and being a medical practitioner myself i fully appreciate the need uh, for us to train more medical practitioners out there and this is why I'm extremely excited that you have uh, indicated a keen interest in the medical studies in our university. Now, the, the Nelson Mandela University Medical School is one of two medical schools in the Eastern Cape province. And it is the 10th medical school in this country. So the medical school opened its doors, as we have had earlier on, it's uh, for the first cohort of students this year. And it was a total of 50 students. And this was as, as per recommendation by the Health Professions Council of South Africa. Now, the Health Professions Council of South Africa is commonly known as the HPCSA. It is the one that ensures that uh, this, the curriculum and the way the curriculum is delivered is up to expected standards, particularly to meet the, 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 those uh, various um, principles that have been uh, discussed in our presentations earlier on. So, um, and you have been addressed by a representative of the class uh, who was who has, I'm sure, has given you quite a clear indication of how well we have been proceeding uh, in, in the course of this year. Now, for the year 2022, and this question has been asked, we note on the Q&A, uh, in terms of how many uh, applic uh, applicants or students will be enrolling. So we'll be taking in 80 successful applicants, and this also is determined by the Health Professions Council of South Africa. And it is important that I re-emphasize that the applications are currently open and they will be closing on the 30th of June, which is effectively seven days from today. And so I would encourage you to submit your online applications as soon as possible if you have not done so, because no late applications will be considered. Now, the Nelson Mandela University Medical School has a community-oriented uh, curriculum, which as we have had, and the university itself is a university that has positioned itself to be responsive to its community. And so the students are exposed at an earlier stage of their training to the various communities and are able to appreciate the public health issues, challenges, and the needs of the communities. So it is this philosophy that informed why we positioned uh, the medical school in the Mission Vale campus. As you have appreciated from the presentations and the videos that you saw, we were quite in the center of, uh, of uh, township communities. And this is where most of the primary healthcare needs are in the township and the rural communities. 
And so when you join our university, you are then able to begin to appreciate the needs of the country and we are able to identify uh, yourself with them. And we do hope that when you are, when you, as you progress through the six years of training, you will be able to participate in some undergraduate research, which will then assist uh, in forming the public health in this country. We do look forward to receiving your application and I do wish you a very successful 2021 academic year. We do know that the pandemic has uh, presented uh, unprecedented challenges before, and um, but we do have faith in you that you will be able to put some effort and be meet to be able to meet the minimum requirements that have been stated beforehand. I would, on that note, I would like to thank you once again for joining us, and I do want to urge everyone to please observe all COVID precautions. We will, we will be continuing to answer all your, Q and A, your questions on the Q&A uh, panels. We publish most of those that are, are to the greater benefit of everyone, but we shall be having time towards the end of this webinar to, to, for each individual to address in their areas of specialities. But I do just want to add as well that our staffing complement is, um, is, is available on the, on the floor to re respond to your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Numvede, for, for that great history into our 10th medical school in the country. And the second in the Eastern Cape as well, um, in case you did not know. So now, Prof, please don't go too far because now we will be going into our question and answer session and it will be run by Professor Fikile Nombete. Now, if, if you haven't asked your questions as yet, please do feel free to ask as many questions as you want to. Any burning questions, there's never uh, a question that we possibly cannot answer. If we cannot, we will look back and then revert to you. So, Prof Nombete, please do take it away. Yes, uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Zitulele. I, I, I'm just going to encourage um, the colleagues to perhaps keep their, their cameras on, their videos on. And uh, the f one main question that I that I see coming up, uh, which is very important, is around the national benchmark test. So now one, the question there is, do we need to write an NBT if you are already in university? That's the one aspect to it. And the second aspect to it, to the other one is, uh, what if you cannot access the NBT? So in other words, it speaks to the access of, or to the, of the writing the NBT. Now I'm going to invite um, Mrs. Connelly here, Laika, who is going to just deal with the NBT question first. Thank you. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us with this webinar. Um, with regard to the NBT, if you are a school leaver or you are a student in your first year that does not have an academic record as yet, you would be required to write the NBT. You would then also for remember that the NBT is only valid for three years, um, so you would have had to write the test in the three year period. Um, for access, there are specific dates and we have required it up until the end of July that test needs to be written. They do have sites where you can write, which is all available on the NBT website. Um, and they also have an online option for students um, that is available. Thank you very much, Mrs. Connelly. Um, and now the, the next question is particularly speaks to uh, enrollment and I, I think it's linked to the curriculum. So I'm going to ask Dr. Elizabeth to speak to those people who or who have been studying uh, perhaps sciences and in particular human sciences, whether they get uh, any credits and uh, which year of enrollment perhaps they will get into and to pro even to explain why Mandela University has taken this position. Thank you, uh, Dr. Tutoy. Thank you so much. 
Um, yes, so for those of you who do have additional studies, be that a completed degree or maybe one or two years in a, in a bachelor's degree, we do actually require all students to start from the first year. This is because our modules are very integrated. And so even though you may have done some of the medical science, there will be other aspects in the module that come in that you would miss out on. So unfortunately, no credits are given for previous studies. So all students start in the in in the first year of their six years. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much to Dr. Tutoya, and that's quite clear. I think that the, the one other question that uh, is, I'm going to take it back to uh, Mrs. Connelly, uh, Connelly uh, is the question of South Africans, which have uh, a, a pre-university qualification outside from South Africa. There is a, a there was a question of a South African who studied the international baccalaureate diploma. In, and it is offered in various countries um, and, and they would like to know how they would be considered for the application. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. So with the International Baccalaureate, um, what you would need to do is students that have schooling and you've done schooling outside of South Africa, you would need to apply to what they call is HESA, which is the matriculation board. What they do is they will evaluate to ensure that your schooling that you've completed is equivalent to a South African schooling system. This allows you into entry into first year studies um, and that would give you the equation. So when you do application, initially you can do application without that certificate, but I would encourage you for easy um, and access for processing um, that you do with the application prior as well with the board. Thank you, Prof. Right, thank you very much. I think I'm, I'm just going to quickly jump onto one question and attempt to, to address it myself. And, uh, and this is a question of, of the quota, if we use any quota system. Um, no, we do not use a quota system in, in, in the university, in the medical school. What we do use is uh, the quintile system. So there is a pre, um, uh, there's a prescribed percentage of applicants which will be coming from a certain quintile and this will be quintile one to quintile three uh, groups and then they, they, there will be a particular percentage which is for the other quintiles four and five as well as the private schools etc so we do not use a quota system and and i will want perhaps kasim to to maybe comment on what he has seen as a as a demographic image of his class having used the quintile system that we have applied. Thank you, uh, Kasim. Yeah, I think so the diversity, the di diversity in our class this year is quite amazing. And you see people from all different income groups and all different uh, lifestyles. And so when they come together at Nelson Mandela University in the end, and we all on the same footing, we see students really excel because of the opportunities that we have here. But yeah, our class is quite diverse and I've met some amazing people uh, through this diversity. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Kasim, for that. And um, uh, Laika, Ms. Connelly, this is going to come back to you again. Uh, I see there is some anxiety around the NBT as well as um, using a grade 11 marks as opposed to grade 12 marks. So, around the NBT is when can the applicant submit NBT if they actually need to submit it at all and 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 secondly uh, away from the from 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 the from the submit from the NBT is the use of grade 11 marks versus grade 12 results thank you prof so with the NBT um, it is required for students to write the NBT, to have written the NBT no later than the 30th of July. We would obviously then receive the results after that, but students are required to write the test um, by the 31st of July. Um, with regard to the usage of grade 11 results versus grade 12 results, if and I think the anxiety comes with that you're not meeting the requirements. 
the suggestion would be is that students need to meet the re apply for a program that you meet the requirements for if you don't meet it for the MBCHB program. The university on a whole does not consider grade 12 term one results, and we are aware that students are only receiving June results if they are writing as matriculants um, later in July after our applications close. So the recommendation is that you apply for a program which you meet the requirements for. Once you've received your grade 12 results, we would then you can email me directly and you can request for us to reconsider your application. It's also advisable that during this time that you do write the NBT test as well or make your booking for the NBT. Thank you, Prof. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Laika. I think I want to just ask uh, Kasim if he may comment, just if you can give one example of the what he found the most challenging uh, experience and uh, also uh, one thing that he is excited him and want him to stay around uh, the medical school. Thank you, cousin. OK. Uh, thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor. So I think one thing that makes me excited is the people that I work with on a daily basis, the people from my class. And because we've built sort of like a family within the class, and we support each other and we help each other go through the curriculum and get through the work and we meet on weekends, we go for walks on the beach and that that really makes me excited to be here and stay in the program. One thing that makes it extremely challenging is the weather in Port Elizabeth. It's not consistent at all and I come from Limpopo where it's extremely hot and humid and here in 10 minutes you, you have to be carrying a jacket because in 10 minutes the weather can change. So that that makes it quite difficult at times. But yeah, thank you, bro. Yes, uh, thanks, Kasim. I, I, yeah, I think many of us who came from outside Port Elizabeth have certainly found the weather quite challenging indeed. Um, then there, there is uh, just one uh, question that I would uh, like to, 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 I mean, uh, to address. Uh, do we take engineering students? Do we take BSCs um, um, in engineering? We, we are very clear on the prospectus that it's preferably uh, applicants who have done um, a science and particularly if it's a human biological science, it puts you at a better position. It is not to say you should not apply. Uh, there's a selection committee, the selection process that goes through. So once applications go through and you meet all your requirements, because you may have met them with your NSC, that is the metric results, and you may have a good university average as well, then that will then qualify you to go for the selection. And a selection committee is quite an independent committee. It is also governed by recommendations that have been set before by the university, and they go through all the applications. And all applicants are rated, once again, using pre-specified um, 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 steps, and those that uh, perform the best to uh, meeting the requirements as well will then be offered a place. Now, linked to that, it's important to, to appreciate that although you may have met the minimum requirements, it is not to say you then will be awarded a position. It, it becomes a closely contested space, and this is not unique to Mandela University Medical School. This is uh, across all medical schools in the country and beyond that there's a lot of applications of people who do meet the minimum requirements but once we have rated the different applications those that are performing the best based on the pre set requirements will then be offered the spaces but i do want to encourage anyone else anyone who meets the minimum requirements to apply whether or not they will go through the selection, we shall leave that to the selection committee. If you meet the requirements, apply, although it is not a guarantee that you will be offered a place. Thank you. Um, Elizabeth, I'll, uh, I'll just um, 
like, or, or rather, let me first start with um, Savania, Dr. Nagia. There is a question here about uh, if you've had a first degree being biochemistry and, uh, and physiology, uh, whether this could be credited. I think this needs to speak to you as well, because you are, you, you, <laughs> you are, you, you need to tell us the applicability of, um, of, of, of biochemistry, the way you present it. Okay. Um, yeah, so we've been getting this question a lot in the Q&A session and I've been trying to reply to everyone. A lot of BSc students, a lot of people from pharmacy and other health sciences, and I understand there's a lot of commonality between the courses that you do. However, what happens is we tend to see modular takes in other institutions and other programs where you do physics 101, chemistry 101, biochem 101, and it's an individual model, module and you get a credit for it. Um, whereas with our curriculum, it's a very integrated approach to the medical sciences because we are not teaching you to be scientists, we are teaching you to be healthcare professionals. So we are building your foundational knowledge so that you can apply it in a healthcare setting. Um, so what happens is we have a very big first year science module. It carries on through your entire first year and we begin with your basic sciences at an atomic level and then we build on that. So it's quite constructive um, when you think about it. So even if you did biochemistry, a whole degree in it, you learnt it in the context of a science. The same with physiology because I'm a scientist myself, but I couldn't be a doctor. Um, so you're going to keep having it applied in this healthcare perspective. So as you study biochemistry, we're going to integrate it with what you will do in chemical pathology in your third year, with your pharmacology in your second year. So we're building across different disciplines in your first year, but we're also building on your subsequent years when you do your more applied medical uh, content. I hope that answers your question. So it just makes it very difficult to give you credit for having done your individual biochem or your individual physiology when we are taking it from this approach of building on ideas and building um, or constructivism at least. So we take your biochem, apply it to cell biology, then apply it to physiology and anatomy, and you build on that for your pathology. So yeah, I hope that answers the question as to why you have to enter it first year. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Nagia. Uh, I'm quite uh, aware of time. I do know that we've got less than 10 minutes to complete our webinar, uh, but I would like to just invite Dr. Ngubane to address another question here, the question of student support. Uh, how those that are coming from uh, much more um, uh, disadvantaged schools, but have performed very well in their metric and uh, ultimately offered a place in the Mandela University Medical School. What support structures or services that we have there to ensure that they can come into the university um, a community, fit into it and perform well in class and their studies? Uh, Dr. Ngubane? You're muted. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Yes, um, we have student that comes from um, uh, um, linguist, uh, different uh, linguistic backgrounds, and uh, we do have exciting programs. Um, for example, we have academic literacy that speaks to that, uh, the development of language skills, the development of communication skills. We also have the math club um, that also talks to the, um, the team building and the, um, and the coming together of different cultures so that we we develop and um, we understand each other's cultures and in a way as well we develop the language skills as well so we do not actually have a problem with it if a student comes from a, a language background that is not a, a, in a way a, a university language which is english we do cater for that uh, that is what we do in the uh, academic literacy yes uh th th thank you uh, thank you norma uh, there is there is a question as well of whether uh, the the degree that we offer is internationally recognised. I think this 
this this just calls for me to try and explain uh, the medical degree in, in, in South Africa. Firstly, that the degree, the curriculum has to be approved by a body called the Council on Higher Education. So this degree has been approved by the Council of Higher Education. And then secondly, um, then the Health Professions Council of South Africa has to also approve uh, uh, that the medical school may continue meeting all the, 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 the its guides and principles. And this has also been done. And then thirdly, then the degree has to be registered with the South African Qualifications Authority. And this degree has also been registered to it. Now, this goes for all degrees and all medical degrees in particular in the country. And when you want to go and practice outside and beyond the country, you would need to meet the requirements of the registra registering body of that particular country. And the MPCHB degrees coming out of South Africa are generally accepted worldwide in many, many countries. Some countries may want you to write particular exams. Uh, for example, if you're going to go to Canada, if I can use that as an example, you may need to write certain exams. As much as in South Africa as well, the HPCSA expects uh, people who had their medical training outside the country when they come back to write South African board exams as well. Thank you very much. I think for now, in the interest of time, we uh, we may not have been able to answer all the questions, but I'm going to hand back to Dr. Chabalala uh, to just make some concluding remarks. I do want to just stress again that whoever is interested in applying and is meeting the minimum requirements, they must make sure that the application has come through before the 30th of June. And, um, and also to ensure that they have written the NBT by the 31st of July. They do not have to have had the results available before the 31st of July, but it must have been written. And South African citizens who have got uh, foreign-based qualifications such as the A-level and the IB diploma to follow as, uh, as guided uh, to register their qualifications and then they will be given a certificate of matriculation exemption which we may, which we may use. On the question of the relevance of the NVT and when you need to do it, this is considered in the selection committee uh, during the scoring. Uh, so the selection committee will take that uh, the, the NPT score, combine it with the NSC score, which is your metric results, and they come up with an uh, with a result or or or, or pour some certain points, which will then will be used uh, uh, as to consider whether you, you we may be offered a place or not. So thank you very much. I hope that has clarified the much anxiety around uh, the foreign qualifications as well as uh, the NBT issues. Uh, Dr. Chabalala, uh, please uh, throw the webinar towards a conclusion. I do not, we are left with about one and a half minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Nambete. Um, Thank you very much, colleagues. But most of all, thank you to all of you that took your time to attend uh, this webinar today. We really appreciate your interest in our medical school and we really hope that you will take this opportunity to join this wonderful program of ours. And please be reminded once again that applications close next week. You have seven days to apply. They close on the 30th of June, right? So please make sure that you get your application in as soon as possible. And ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of this webinar. Uh, hopefully it was very insightful and it, it answered all of your questions. And this recording, should you have missed anything, the recording of this webinar will be available on our website. Um, it is medicalschool.mandela.ac. Um, Dot za and should you have any other questions please feel free to email us at medical school at mandela .ac .za. and with this ladies and gentlemen i bid you farewell thank you very much have a great evening